Kylene Bogdan here from Forward Fuel Sports Nutrition. Let's talk about fixing soreness. The number one factor that determines how much benefit we get from our workouts is our ability to recover. We can work out like a madman, but if we can't recover, we can't train hard for the next session and we won't get the major benefits from those workouts. Basically, if we don't fully recover, we'll be training or competing with damaged muscles that are unable to contract and perform to their fullest. Additionally, training on sore and damaged muscles repeatedly over many years will cause excessive damage to build up, leading to decreased flexibility in the muscle, decreased ability to contract and effectively produce force, and an increased risk for injury. So, learning how to recover and fix muscle soreness is absolutely crucial, whether you want to just be able to enjoy your workouts, improve body composition, gain lean muscle, or try to increase your performance to the next level for your next event. Muscle soreness recovery is absolutely crucial. So. In this video, we are going to cover five crucial tips for muscle soreness. Are you ready? All right, tip number one, remove inflammatory foods. Your body can't put out all the fires, AKA repair the muscles, ligaments, and joints irritated and stressed during training sessions if it is working overtime to put out other fires throughout our body because everything is inflamed. The relationship between food and inflammation is no longer just a myth and it has been clearly validated in the research. In fact, there are now thousands of studies analyzing the amount of inflammation in foods and various diets. Some of these studies have applied scores to foods based on the antioxidant, vitamin, and mineral content. By using this scale, they actually have been able to create something called the inflammatory index to help systematically score diets and various foods and more clearly analyze how it affects various populations. Here is one example of how the scores turned out when comparing a fast food diet to a Mediterranean and macrobiotic diet. Just think of it this way. If almost every tissue in your body is irritated, nerves, your gut, muscles, joints, you name it, because you've been slamming high amounts of processed foods and sugar, how can it effectively help muscles, joints, and ligaments repair after a workout? Look, our body only has so many resources it can use to get the work done. It's as if you're living in a city with just one fire department, but 12 houses are on fire. How effectively can it put out a fire when there is one team, but 12 houses are burning to the ground? Not well. The resources are spread thin and only the most crucial issues get managed by the fire department. Thus, leaving the rest to burn since they have to manage their resources to address only the highest priorities, right? Now, compare this to if there was one house on fire. You get the idea. Our body's no different. If there are fires burning all over, some things that are irritated and need repair, such as ligaments or joints, may get very little assistance in their repair as our body focuses on managing widespread inflammation. It can just affect so much all over the body in larger areas. So the take home point is to avoid processed and inflammatory foods as much as possible so that your body can devote its limited resources into repairing your muscles, joints, and ligaments after a workout. The top foods to avoid are anything processed, meaning you know it comes out of a box and has a million ingredients or it goes through a whole heck of a manufacturing process to get to your mouth, think of it that way. Anything with added sugars or syrups and even fast food as well. Like a french fry should have three ingredients, potato, oil and salt, not 20 plus chemicals. <coughs> McDonald's. <coughs> and by the way, why do these foods cause inflammation? There are a variety of reasons, but the most predominant issue is the fact that refined foods cause changes in gut bacteria by killing off the good stuff and feeding the bad stuff, leading to an imbalance. This imbalance lends itself to a lack of vitamin and mineral density, a lack of antioxidants, and often the abundance of chemicals and preservatives makes it really hard for our liver and kidneys to complete their natural, God-given job of detoxification. If you're going to have a processed food like a protein bar, be sure to read the ingredients on the label and confirm that each ingredient is in fact a whole food. One suggestion if you're a busy person, like most of us, and need a good whole food bar to try, one of our all time favorites is RX Bar. Most of their bars have just three to four ingredients like dates, egg whites, peanuts, and cashews. A slightly better tasting, but still mostly whole food bars go macro. Little quick truth bomb here. There is a bit of added sugar, maybe more so than we'd normally recommend, but they use mostly organic ingredients, most of which you can clearly identify, and plus, our clients are extremely active. But as you've heard before, moderation is key. And by the way, we'll have affiliate links for these suggestions in the modules. And if you really wanna know more about the best anti-inflammatory whole food bars and snacks, be sure to check out our course, 14 Day Full Recovery which has an in-depth guide to save you time and tell you exactly what to buy and what not to buy. All right, next. Tip number two is to add anti-inflammatory foods. 
This is like giving your body more ammo and energy to do all the work it needs to do each day. While some people may simply focus on calories in, calories out, you know, balancing macros, counting almonds, we go 10 steps beyond this with our clients and in our courses because simply counting calories and macros does not take into account the vitamins, minerals, or antioxidant status in a given food. It is outrageous how many pro athletes come to me with perfectly counted macros, but it's all garbage foods and poor quality pre and post workout powders. Okay, so just think about it this way. Do you think the 20 grams of protein from a slice of pent up chicken laying in its own filth is going to help your body repair itself the same way that 20 grams of protein from a wild caught piece of salmon that is full of inflammation crushing omega-3 antioxidants like astaxanthin, you think it's gonna be the same? No. By the way, the antioxidant astaxanthin is largely considered to be responsible for that bright pink beautiful color you see in fresh salmon. Needless to say, when you eat the dull colored farm raised salmon, a lot of vital nutrients are missing. So a quick summary of tip number two, not all calories and macronutrients are the same. Focus on getting high quality anti-inflammatory foods in your diet consistently to help with muscle soreness and recovery. All right, tip number three, meal timing is everything. So blood sugar stability and sleep are two of the biggest components when it comes to recovery. But if meal timing is out of whack, sleep and blood sugar will be out of whack too, right? You can't just skip food all day long and then binge at night. This is not good. It impairs sleep, it allows you to choose more sugar and make poor quality choices. It only makes sense. Tip number four, practice proper recovery nutrition. As a pro sports dietitian, to me, this is arguably the most important meal of the day for two reasons. First, you only have a small window post-workout to get your muscles to ingest the right combo of protein and carbs for repair. And yes, I know there's conflicting research out there that says as long as you fuel properly in a 24 hour period, you're good to go. Eh, but I work in the trenches each day and I beg to differ. Secondly, when you do not fuel properly post-workout, you will more than likely find yourself scavenging or overeating later to make up for lost time. And this does not help body composition, nor does it encourage the best choices when you suddenly find yourself ravenous. Like most people aren't reaching for broccoli when they're starving. <laughs> and last but not least, tip number five, Enhance recovery by optimizing sleep in regards to nutrition. Everyone knows sleep is important, but few truly understand how to optimize it by eating differently. Similarly to how our bodies, you know, struggle to effectively address muscle soreness when it is dealing with widespread inflammation in our body. Our body equally struggles to repair muscles, joints, and tissues when we're sleeping if we eat right before bed. This one is so simple to understand. If our body is focused on trying to digest a bunch of food, even if it's just a salad while we sleep, it can't focus on rebuilding and healing the damaged muscles, ligaments, joints, tendons. You can enhance your sleep and improve your muscle soreness recovery by trying to leave a minimum of a three hour gap between your last bite of food and when you go to bed. By doing this, your body will have finished its digestive process before you go to bed, allowing it to devote its limited resources to what we need most when sleeping rest and repair. I work with athletes all across the United States and they will often say, well, I was so hungry after practice at night or it was so tough when I competed in different time zones and I just, I just didn't know what to do. So I, I ate at the wrong time and I ate too much. Just make sure you're eating enough every three to four hours when you're awake and make sure you're getting enough protein and fat during that time, especially before that three to four hour mark, right? It's easy to shovel the pasta, the sandwiches, the cereal, but it's not always as easy to be conscious of eggs, peanut butter, grass fed beef sticks. You get the idea. Now, if you're someone who really wants to fix your soreness, joint pain or fatigue, and take your performance to the new level, then we would encourage you to check out our 14 day full recovery course, which will take you 10 steps further than we can during this short YouTube video. What's really important is to not only have a basic understanding of what to do to boost recovery, but to have the exact roadmap of the specific foods to remove from your diet. A list of the most powerful anti-inflammatory foods, spices, and smoothie ingredients to really help heal your body, right? We want to instruct you how to get that balance, get those macronutrients, the right foods, enhance sleep, biohack your routine to get better, longer lasting results. Look, if you don't fix your recovery now, you're going to pay for it later. Whether that's with a knee replacement way down the line or having to cut back many of the activities you enjoy like running or Olympic lifts, fixing your recovery now is essential and will pay dividends for years to come. We understand it can be tough and take hours and hours of time over years to piece good information together on all things related to recovery, especially when much of the information out there is, well, not real accurate and a waste of your time. This is why we created 14 Day Full Recovery. It's an all-inclusive course backed by research and experience with athletes from the recreational 
warriors to the pro level athletes. And if you follow the steps we outline, yes, you can in fact achieve full recovery starting in just 14 days and take your strength and performance to levels you have yet to see before. If you're interested in saving time, money, and even your joints, as well as enjoying your next workout because you actually feel good, it only takes about 60 seconds to sign up and we'll have a link to enroll in the notes below for this video. All right, that's all for now. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and if you liked it, subscribe for future updates. Thanks, we'll see you soon.